there was no way that I could see through to the mirrors from the back of the machine here so I've cut this little aperture in here so that I can spy through there at the mirror when it's at the front and the back of its stroke. There's mirror number two. Um, it's as far away as possible from mirror number one. So it's right at the front of the machine. Because we've set mirror number one up at 45 degrees and we've set the beam right into the middle of it, theoretically we should be on mirror number two. Now there may be a small problem with the alignment of mirror number one. It might not be spot on 45 degrees. So let's have a quick pulse. So there it is. This procedure is all about economy of adjusting the mirrors. There are, some, there are times when you can adjust the mirror and times when you must not adjust the mirror. So with mirror number two as far away as possible, what I'm now going to do is line up the dot onto the center of the mirror, approximately. We're not going to be 100% fussy, but you'll see what I mean. This is basically a sighting uh, operation. This is not beam alignment. We're just trying to get the number one mirror set up into a reasonable position because we only set it up nominally, if you remember, off of the back plate. If I bring the two bottom ones up by the same amount, and we'll check where we are now. But that's not bad, is it? So technically what we've done now is to correct the slight imperfection that we might have had when we set the nominal mirror position up. So we're now going to come as close as we can to mirror number one. Let's just put a new piece of tape on there. So this is, this is really the first real stage of beam alignment. We must do a, a little mark here. It's not far off centre at all, but now what we're going to do that's, if you like, a target. It's right at the front of the machine now and we'll do another little burn test. So we've got to drop that beam down very slightly and very slightly to the right to get it to sit on top of the target burn. Now whether, it, whether or not it's in the centre of the mirror at this moment in time you mustn't worry. What you've got to do is to get that second burn on top of the first burn. We should, we should do that with a little tweak to... This is where you have to think what's happening to the, to the beam as it reflects off the mirror. I want it to come down and across. We'll try it again. We think we've done that, but we'll just repeat the exercise again. So if we can send it to the other end of the stroke now, and I would say that we've probably burnt a hole right through the middle there and we've got two coinciding dots. Right, let's just have a quick review of what we've just done. When we first started off um, we thought we'd set this laser beam up on the red path between the centre of the first mirror and the, onto the centre of the second mirror. But when we actually did our target tests and our burn tests, what we found was that we'd actually set the beam up like that, the green beam. So that when we got to the front end of the machine here, it was way off target. Now, what we've then attempted to do is to, with the aid of adjusting this first mirror here very slightly, we have corrected any error that we had in this mirror and, and now that we've corrected with this number one mirror the beam what we've done we've made the beam run absolutely parallel with this bearing rail in both the horizontal and the vertical planes we may well have had the beam now set to there which is offset it could be offset to the left the right up or down but at least we know that wherever the dot is in the target area the beam is running parallel to that rail and that is the essential thing that we are trying to achieve. What we cannot do now is mess around with this number one mirror because if we mess around with this number one mirror to try and get the beam in the centre of the targets at both ends of the stroke we can't, it's impossible. 
um, because what will happen is we shall immediately destroy all the work that we've just done. So the only way that we can now shift these, these dots from where they are, which is off-center, to back onto center, is by physically moving the laser beam. Now, as I move this laser beam up and down, look at the number one mirror and see what's happening. If I want to move this dot to the left, I've got to move the laser beam across. And what we've actually got to do is to move the tube across so that as the laser beam comes out, it strikes the mirror slightly earlier and comes across through the centre of the target. But we shall have to do it in a parallel manner, which is why I was showing you earlier about setting the laser up with blocks. If we want to move the laser across by three millimetres, all we've got to do is add an extra three millimetres or take an extra three millimetres, depending on which way we want to go, away from the spacer behind the laser. And similarly, if we want to raise the beam up or down, we've got to add or subtract from the spacer pile that's underneath the laser. And that's the only way that we're now allowed to adjust the beam onto centre. It's got to be on centre because we've got such a small area to aim at here on this number two mirror. I would say it looks as though we might have to raise that beam by two millimetres maybe. That's the very, very most we're gonna to have to raise it, two mil. Might even only be a mil and a half. So I think we'll see if we can find some packing pieces which are 1.5 millimetres thick. Well, I found some polycarbonate, little pieces of polycarbonate sheet which are 1.5 millimetres thick. So that's probably just about the right amount to raise this tube up by. So what I should do is tuck 1.5 millimetres at the front and 1.5 millimetres at the back And we're just tightening the clamps up to make sure that they don't raise up. The beam is sitting down and clamped down on the spacers. And I don't know about you, but that hole looks to be pretty central up and down now. And that's the way to fix that problem. I haven't had to touch the mirror again. So now we're absolutely sure that we've got the y-axis set up. I hesitate to use the word perfectly, but I think it's pretty well near perfect. OK, we're now going to repeat the same set of simple logical steps to set up the x-axis across the machine here. So first of all, we're going to bring the head right to the front and as far away as we can possibly send it. And we're going to see if we can find out where the beam is. now. I suspect it won't be anywhere near my target area. So just to make sure that I don't do any damage to any of my cables or anything like that, um, I'm going to put a piece of paper here to start with just to see where the beam is. Right, it's there. So where is there? Wow, there looks pretty good. So let's see whether we can find it on our target. Yep, look, we can see it growing just at the top there. So that's not too bad. Now what we've got to do is make a, a major change, if you like, to get the beam approximately to the centre. This is not beam alignment. This is just getting the beam into approximately the right position. So. <coughs> So basically we're sort of central and I've got to get it down not very far because this line here represents the centre of my mirror, not the centre of the hole in this occasion because I've already worked out that the centre of my mirror is nowhere near the centre of this target area. So I've got to come down to about here, which is not very far and I should be able to do that mainly with the top screw to adjust the mirror downwards. That's not bad. Now we've just got to come down a shade more. Up a bit. And 
maybe slightly across a bit more but we haven't really got to be too fussy about this because this is not site this is not actually setting the beam parallel to these axes right now we start the proper beam alignment so we've got to bring the mirror in as close as we can to mirror number two. This is our target dot. And now we're going to push it away as far as we can. Now what we've got to do is to adjust wherever the wherever the dot comes, wherever the burn comes now, we've got to adjust it onto this target. So I think we can already see there that it is slightly low, probably by about three millimetres. So let's just do that again. I should just put a sighting mark on there. And there we go. Now, I would say that that beam is probably a millimetre above this line. A millimetre is not a problem, but we're trying to set this up perfectly. So how do we get that mark onto this line? So that line, so that dot is about two millimetres above centre, maybe one and a half to two millimetres above where it ideally should be. Now how are we going to get that dot down onto this line? Because we can't mess with the mirror We've just used the mirror to set the beam up absolutely parallel in both of these axes. If we mess with the mirror, we shall mess with our settings. One possibility is we could go right to the back of the machine again and we could drop the laser beam down by the one and a half millimetres that we put it up. That's a possibility. The other possibility is that because I've designed this head here so that it's adjustable this way and that way I could technically loosen the head off and I could move the head up in other words I move the head to catch the beam in the centre of the target area which is why I've separated this head from the tube that way I can do the, the Y axis from the tube and the X axis from the head so the two things are nice and easily adjustable without interfering with each other. And if you can in any way modify your machine to make your head adjustable, that would be the ideal solution. I've just got two screws on here and that will allow me to move the head up on slots. And I'll just very lightly tighten those screws up for a second because this is only part of the problem. So having loosened that head off, I've got to make sure that I haven't messed around with the squareness of the head. In other words, relative to the table, that head is still square in that direction, which I would expect because I haven't messed with it in that direction. What I've got to do is, technically, I've got to check what's happening in this direction. And as it happens, I haven't caused any problems in that direction either. So it's critical that I get it correct up and down and not quite so critical left and right. But it nearly really needs to be pretty close to centre because what we're going to do now is to try and make sure that we steer that beam right down the centre of this tube. So we've now completed the most difficult part of the procedure. We've got the beams running in both X and Y parallel to their associated axes. And we finished up at this point, catching the beam, ready to send it onto the final journey. Right now, I've taken the nozzle off because I don't want to, I want to see that the beam is coming down the centre of this tube before I let it anywhere near the lens. But before I do that, what I've got to do to this mirror here is the same as I did to all the other mirrors, which is to set it up to a nominal position. So we've now set that up 1.5 millimetres above that plane. Now put a block of perspex under there 
and we'll use one of my little paper targets. And what I'm going to do is to raise the table so it nearly touches and I'm going to eyeball the target to the centre, give or take half a millimetre. Just drop the table down by four or five millimetres just so that we can see what's going on. It's certainly not central, it's not a million miles away, but what I can do, first of all, it needs to come forward towards the camera. And how about that? We'll do the same thing again, but this time we'll drop it down by about an inch and a half. Now we'll see where it is. Not bad. So that beam is going down pretty central. I'm very pleased with that. So now we can put a lens on. Just plug in our air assist. I don't like to run the nozzle without the air assist to keep the lens clean. So here we are. This is the first time we've run any power through the lens. 20% power. Wow. <laughs> Well, I hope you can see that that's about 15 millimeters deep just from a little 20% pulse in both planes the beam is going down vertical so I'm very happy about that setup and I would say that that's probably about as perfect as I'm going to get it previously I've been cutting this 15 millimeters with uh, about 30 32 watts at one millimeter per second and you've seen the results, they're pretty good. I've now got twice as much power, so I would expect I could probably go twice as fast. Let's give it a try. So we're running this at two millimeters per second. And I know that it's cutting all right because I can see the smoke coming out underneath. It's not coming out of the top. can see through the perspex that there's just a small amount of drag on the beam at the bottom. Let's just have a look, see what's happened. It's not bad, 